Hi, welcome back to Summary Judgment. This is Aaron Von Flader, and I'm here with my co-founder of FVF Law, Josh Fogelman. Josh, today we have a, a fun topic. Do injury settlement calculators work? And we're talking about those things online that say car accident settlement calculators or injury settlement calculators, and they're designed to let people know what their case is worth. So um, what do you think about those? Let's just start up, up top. Man, I've got I've got some mixed feelings about them. Um, a lot of people hop onto Google. They've been hurt. They don't really know what to do. They don't know what to expect, and they're looking for some information about what they can expect an insurance company to pay on their personal injury claim. And they trust these mostly lawyer websites to provide them information about what the value of their case might be maybe to try to use that information to negotiate a resolution of their claim. But the reality of it is settlement calculators just in, in most circumstances absolutely cannot account for the significant number of factors and variables that come into play when evaluating what fair and adequate compensation for a person should be for the injuries they have sustained in an injury event. So if I had to just give some basic advice to someone wondering whether they should trust one of those settlement calculators to give them a good gauge on what they should expect, I would say it's probably not something to trust and it would be a good idea to get on the phone and actually talk to somebody who can listen to the, the various aspects of the case and ask the questions that they need to ask to actually give you a customized idea of what your expectations should be. Yeah, I think a lot of people are sitting there uh, kind of afraid to call a lawyer, which is totally understandable given the way that a lot of injury lawyers have marketed themselves as kind of a in-your-face type of marketing. And, and people are private. This is a private subject. A lot of times their injuries are, are very personal. A lot of times it's affected uh, their you know, loved ones in a, and there's been some kind of catastrophic event. And a lot of times they just want their space. And so they're online, they're looking for some way to get some information without having to actually talk to somebody. That is you know, completely understandable. But um, if you just go through a, a few of these, I think you'll see why uh, we recommend avoiding them. You know, the, the first thing that, that I notice is, as you pointed out, they are run by law firms who are trying to get your contact information within five or six questions they're asking if you have your if you can give them the contact information in order to complete the evaluation for me that would be very frustrating <laughs> to be you know going through answering questions and then being told that i can't actually get my free evaluation until i talk to the lawyer which is what i was trying to avoid in the first place uh, so they can be a little misleading I think the other thing that strikes me is that, as you pointed out, Josh, there are so many more factors than five or six questions. I mean, how many questions do you think you have to ask to be able to tell somebody even a, a, an approximate range of what their case was worth? Yeah, I, I mean, I can't answer that question other than to, because there are just so many of them other than to say it often takes months to even be able to get to a point to understand a person's injuries well enough where we can even start talking about what their future looks like to give them some idea of what kind of a recovery they should, they should expect. And the settlement calculators, they just, they're not that sophisticated. They can't do that. Yeah, when our clients are deposed, and so a deposition is a formal interview under oath. When you're in a lawsuit, uh, a lot of times the other side has the right to depose you and we have a right to depose you know, the outfall parties and, and any kind of witness, the deposition can last for hours. And in that deposition, there might be hundreds, sometimes thousands of questions asked uh, of a person. And the whole point of that is to see, well, what is this case worth? It takes that much digging. And so is it possible that somebody could design artificial intelligence to try to figure out the approximate value of the case? Absolutely. We know some big insurance companies who already do that. And as good as those programs are, which they sunk millions of dollars into trying to create the right questions, 
they still get it wrong. How do we know that? <laughs> well, because they've given us their quote unquote top dollar that their robot has told them the case was worth. We've gone to trial and gotten 10 X of that number, right? Josh, I think you remember a recent case uh, like that. So um, obviously, you know, a website that asks you six questions is not going to really give you a very good answer. Um, now, here's an idea, and that is uh, if you do, if you come at it the other way, start searching for lawyers that you can talk to, people that you, you would be friends with, you know, whether or not you had a case, just reputable lawyers who are nice and happen to be willing to be on the phone with you for as long as it takes to give you the answers with zero pressure. You know, that's, that's uh, not something you can really tell right away from a quick Google search, but if you keep digging and looking at the websites, you'll find there are firms. I like to say that FBF Law is one of them. Uh, we may be, you know, in my opinion, we're the best in Austin when it comes to, to really taking the time to listen to everybody, including people that in seconds we know we can't represent. It's just not a good case for us to work on or whatever. We will still spend hours with those people if we need to, to make sure that they're not being taken advantage of by the system. The system is extremely complicated and uh you know josh you and i were just talking about how our next podcast which is coming up is going to be about what happens uh when you try to represent yourself and whether that's a good idea and we'll get into that a little bit more in that podcast but as a preview um i can tell you that the, the insurance company is betting on your lack of information you know the asymmetrical information that works to their advantage and they are hoping that you don't pick up a phone and call a lawyer they are hoping that you are um, put off by all those bad advertisements on tv um, and so all we're asking is that if you're in that position uh, that you you pick up the phone and, and try to obviously do, do your homework and then pick up the phone and talk to a firm like ours who will uh, shoot you straight without any kind of pressure yeah you know aaron in theory, a settlement calculator, as you said, should be able to maybe give some sort of basic snapshot of what insurance companies are typically paying in personal injury claims where some of the injuries or some of the losses are really basic and the medical bills are very limited, maybe a little bit of lost earnings that you can quickly and easily account for, and a person's made a full recovery. That might be useful in, in trying to figure out what an insurance company might pay. But when we're talking and looking at, when we're looking at personal injury cases over and over and over again, we spend time with people who really have no clue what the long-term implications of their injuries are, and there's just so much of an unknown. But more important than that, when one of our mutual mentors used to talk about identifying and underwriting and evaluating uh, personal injury cases in terms of three different buckets. Uh, there, there's kind of the liability bucket, whether the other person who you're trying to collect money from was clearly at fault. There's the damages bucket, which is how bad the injuries were, how, uh, you know, what, what kind of economic losses there are, what kind of non-economic losses there are. And then of, of equal importance is the third bucket, which is, is there a pocket to go after? Is there a source of recovery? And I think that that's really good wisdom. And I think that some of that information can be gleaned in the settlement calculator by using a settlement calculator. If you had that information already ready and you had done a good job of of, of accumulating that information. But I've, I found, and I think you'll agree with this in practice, that there's really a fourth bucket, which is the unknowns, the intangibles. Mm -hmm. What kind of aggravating factors are out there that you can only find if you start really digging? What is it about the individual that an artificial intelligence machine can't really understand that a jury of your peers would understand that make the particular injury that the person has sustained much, much more valuable than what the artificial intelligence might try to tell you. And those are the types of questions that a good lawyer will, will answer or try to answer or counsel you and lead you to be able to answer in order to do what it is that you're trying to do, which is maximize your recovery from the insurance company company or from the company who harmed you 
And I just, I haven't seen a settlement calculator that comes even close to being able to do those things. And, and I, I, I agree with you that they tend to be more kind of a, a trap for the wary. So, yeah, I, I, I will tell you there's something in our humanity that can't be quantified. And it causes us, as you know, Josh, sometimes to have to turn to focus groups. You know, we've been expertly trained from, you know, a lot of our lawyers, including me on the inside of insurance companies all the way through trial and here today, uh, you know, no one that I know of uh, should be better than us at figuring out what a case is worth. And yet we still, after spending a months, months and maybe years with our clients, we still have to turn to focus groups where we talk to third parties and just human beings and say, how do you, how does this person strike you? What do you think about this case? And there's no way to predict sometimes how they're going to respond. A lot of times their responses are based on just how well they liked your client or how much they didn't like what um, the at fault party did. And a lot of times it comes down to, does the jury have a job to do? You know, the jury is the conscience of the community. They, they enforce the standards uh, and the rules in our communities. And a lot of times um, they feel like it's really important that their voice be heard. And in those cases, the value can be way more than any robot would tell you it's worth. Uh, it's just, you know, the nature of, of their job. So, um, you know, I think this is one of those subjects that I, uh, we could probably talk forever about. Um, but I think we, you know, we've got another podcast we want to throw at you guys about uh, representing yourself in personal injury cases. And so if you're curious about this topic, check out the next one. Um, our next episode, it should be uh, a good uh, su supplement to this conversation. Yeah. So, you know, this has been a discussion about uh, personal injury and car, ex uh, car accident settlement calculators. We appreciate y'all listening in. Another episode of Summary Judgment. Stay tuned for more.